Muslims living in Australia have feared for their safety after the hostage situation that took place in Sydney. And as a result, non-Muslims have come together in order to protect those who feel unsafe in public transportation. Now, this all started when uh, a woman by the name of Rachel Jacobs noticed that there was a woman on a train who was slowly taking off her hijab and trying to conceal the fact that she was Muslim. And of course she was doing that because she was worried that there would be violence targeted toward her because of the hostage situation. Well, after she had written about it, a woman by the name of Tessa Kum noticed it and she started a Twitter hashtag to protect Muslims. So first she wrote the following. If you regularly take the 373 bus between Kogi and Martin Place, wear religious attire and don't feel safe alone, I'll ride with you, tweet me for the schedule, right? Mm -hmm. After she tweeted that, all of a sudden, the hashtag, I'll ride with you, went viral. Yeah, and I a bunch this. of Australians got together and they said, you know what, here's my schedule on public transportation, I want to help out as well, I will protect you. And it was just a really great... You know, humanitarian effort in a way, because all of a sudden you have people getting together and protecting one another from irrational hatred. So uh, I love this happening in Australia, and, and I wish that we had similar reactions in the U.S., and it's a great credit to the Australian people who, who instantly put this together organically, right? Uh, because this guy's a lone nut. There's a ton of lone nuts here in America they do things for different reasons in their own crazy heads. Right-wingers, uh, Muslim fundamentalists, uh, the, the guy who shot all the people, women and the people who support women or who have sex with women. Like all these, whatever their stupid crazy ideology is, mm -hmm. this guy's not connected to ISIS or Al-Qaeda or anyone else. He's a guy who's been going around Australia leading his own protest by himself. He's a self-styled sheik. Yep. And so blaming other Muslims that live in Australia for it is insane. Yeah, right? and, and we did see you know an uptick in violence targeted toward Muslims after 9/11. People who didn't, who weren't even Muslim, but happened to somehow look Muslim or were stereotyped as Muslim, were being attacked as well. Cab drivers in New York, for instance. I mean, again, it's just irrational hatred, irrational fear, a lot of fear mongering. And to know that this kind of effort took place in another country is kind of inspiring. And you're right. I wish that that kind of behavior existed here in the U.S. as well. You know, a lot of people then rebel and say, no, you guys are being ridiculous. It's not irrational at all, man. It's Muslims. It's always Muslims. Now, in America, we know for a fact, uh, due to the reporting, that uh, terrorism is done more by right-wing terrorists than there it is by Muslim terrorists. That's true after 9-11. That uh, was true before 9-11. Now, obviously, the scale of 9-11 was devastating. We, we get that. By the way, the scale of Oklahoma City was also devastating, and that was also a right-winger, right? So, but when the right-wingers do it, nobody's like, let's go attack all the right-wingers and strike back at them. But a lot of people do have the reaction yeah. when it's a Muslim, let's go hit all the Muslims. I mean, my favorite story of all time that we covered on the Young Turks was about uh, how the Defense Department actually stopped focusing on right-wing extremism because the right-wing fought back. They had a department that was dedicated to fighting right-wing extremism in the country. And then since the right-wing was upset about that, they're like, all right, fine, we'll cut down the department to one person. There used to be 25 people tracking that because you, you need a lot of people, obviously, because this is a huge problem in America. Yeah. They brought it down to one person. The guy who ran it, he said, I'm a Republican. What are we doing? Why are we allowing these extremists to go on track? That's going to lead to trouble. And by the way, it has. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm inspired by the Australians. I, I have an idea that I just thought of as we were talking. Next time a right-winger uh, attacks and kills someone, in America it happens way too often because everybody's got guns, right? I'll ride with you, right-wingers. So, you know what, just to make sure you're safe, uh, I'll, I'll take a conservative to work, okay? Well, I don't know what they would do here, but okay, I'll take you to your work. So, now, doesn't that seem absurd? Of course nobody's going to lash out at all right-wingers. Yeah. So why do they do it when it comes to Muslims?